Hi, Dina. Hi, Siri. Where am I finding you now? I don't know. I'm looking. Why is this like this? It's, oh, got it. Okay. All right. I'm here. <laughs> I, where where are you now? I'm here. I see you. No, no, here, where? Are you in the Mamila Mall? Yeah. But I wanted to be like, you know, nothing fancy. When did you arrive in Israel? Uh, Thursday, November 3rd. No, we arrived Friday, November 3rd. We left on November 2nd. We decided to come on November 1st at about four o'clock in the afternoon. And <clears throat> we could have gotten on a flight, but we kind of missed the tickets that night. So we left the next day. So we got there, we left Thursday, we got there Friday. Tell me what you've been up to there. Well, first of all, we left and um, we just knew we had to go and get there ready. Um, we had no no uh, plans set in terms of what volunteering um, uh, opportunities. We just didn't have any, but we knew that there was such a need and that we would find it. There's a lot of networking you have to do, a lot of searching, but um, the response from everyone here is absolute gratitude. They, you know, um, my brother told somebody, you know, this is my sister. She's here from New York and um, just a volunteer. And she's like, oh, my God, I have the chills. The, there's so, there's so, so, so appreciative. I can't even put into words. They just can't believe that people are coming to help them and just do it, you know, on their own. You know, um, it's it's everybody everybody responds that way. And we say, you're helping us, you know? We're, we're so happy to be here. It's the most peace that I have felt in a month. It's Do you have any fear, fear, Dina? Fear? Fear. I have calm that I haven't felt in a month. To I mean, it's the complete opposite, actually. I feel so protected, so loved. Um, it's just, everyone is connected and there's just, everyone's like there for each other. And I just feel like I'm part of it. And, uh, so tell me what you, you've done. I should say, this is Dina Entretor from Woodmere and she's with a friend of hers, Alana Moskowitz from Woodsburg. And they went to Israel for the exclusive purpose of helping out and volunteering um, where people need them because the you know, 360,000 men were called up to the IDF that didn't anticipate being called up. Tell us what you've been doing, Dina. Well, it's really amazing to see how the entire country rallies together. Everybody just rolls up their sleeves and just gets involved. There's so many opportunities. We started off by um, making sandwiches at Aroma. Aroma takes... A, what they do is like, you can't even wrap your head around it. They make 10,000 sandwiches a day. Wow. There's like a whole, um, like a, an assembly line and um, everybody has a job and every job is so important to make everything run smoothly. And then after that, well, as things start, like every thousand sandwiches, they pack them in boxes. They decorate the boxes. Every sandwich bag is decorated, you know, like Hatzlacha, we love you, like all these inspirational things. So a job is just writing that message. So um, and, and who do you that, give them to? So Alana and I went over to the owner and said, we'd like to deliver these boxes. Where do you need us to go? And he said, I, I need someone to go up north. So we're like, okay, just put the boxes in our car. And that's what we did. We we spent about, I don't know, three hours making sandwiches. And then we spent the next three hours delivering them. And it was so gratifying because when we got to the place, um, I saw soldiers eating sandwiches that were probably dropped off the day before. So I'm like, they really do eat them. They're like, really not like just peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I mean, you have cheese and tomatoes and, and it's all donated. The, I cannot tell you how many loaves of bread, 
how many pieces, it's, it's such an operation and every person is about, they have kids there, but everyone just comes. Nobody asks them, they just come. Did you do it's, any fruit or vegetable picking? Or yes, even- we, went, we went down south. I mean, it was remote, I have to tell you. It was, we, we the, the, the farmer had to come and retrieve us because we couldn't find it. It was so, like we weren't even on roads anymore. And um, he had to show us the way. He was so grateful. He sent me a text the next morning saying, Dean, I so appreciate what you and Lana did. Um, we went there and we, we uh, were part of this whole day of picking. Our job was really to sort everything. And they were we were sorting Rimonim in terms of sizes. And it needed to be done that way because that's the way the stores want them. And then, um, so we had pickers, we had sorters, and we had people putting them, and we also put them into containers. So some kibbutzim want them this way, some stores want them this way. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing, sorry. It's really remarkable, but it was a fabulous experience again. And you meet other people. There was actually um, an office that came to volunteer together. They were like a water filtration system company. And they came as a group, like to bond together and help this farmer. And um, so we got to know them. You meet the most amazing people. Do you so that, hear that any did. part of the war? Do you hear any um, Iron Dome explosions? Do you have to run to shelters at all? So it was very interesting because um, I was saying to Alana, I don't want to talk too soon, but the truth is I don't really feel like there's a war going on. I, I don't see any military experience any military vehicles um but i do i do um we did we heard a little a few booms um while we were in the fields uh but the farmer told us that that was our side um shooting into gaza but that was it It was just a few booms and then you heard some 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 uh Air Force planes, you heard a lot of that, but that was it. That was it. I mean, like, I really, we we haven't heard anything here um, in Yushalayim, um, or I was in Beit Shemesh, there was nothing there. And every place we went, we didn't hear any sirens, and we never had to go to a shelter. And aside from aroma and picking in the field, what other um, activities have you done that have inspired you? But I do want to say one thing. I do want to say that we do get red alerts on our phone. And so there were quite a few um, missiles um, or in central um, Israel and Tel Aviv and um, where else was it? Different parts by um, of, in central, but we didn't hear anything here. And I haven't heard anything since I'm here. Um, what was your other question? So what have you done that have that that's inspired you? What else have you done? Oh my God, I had the most incredible experience. Well, everything is incredible experience, everything. Um, but remind me to tell you about our, our lineup for next week, Alana and I, we already started. What we do is we create a calendar and we set up two volunteering opportunities a day. So we have a morning and we have an afternoon. Actually um, on one of the chats, it says that a uh, person who owns his own supermarket lost all of his employees and he needs people to help him in his store. So I texted him last night and again, also so grateful. Oh my gosh, it, what he was saying was incredible. He needs us to help him um, in the evening hours. So we're going to go there. Maybe we'll get to stock some shelves and just help him out. It just feels really good. I'm sure in your life in Woodmere, you never thought you'd have joy stocking shelves in a grocery store. It's not even the job. It's just being able to be part of the whole movement of helping Am Yisrael. And you asked me about one of the inspirational um, moments, and there were so, so many. I, we just came from a flag. Uh, what was it? A, a stay wrote. Uh, they were celebrating. These people are displaced. Uh, on the top of Ben Yehuda or on the bottom of Ben Yehuda, actually, there's a hotel there and that's where they're staying. So they had a band 
and they were singing and the biggest flags and everybody is draped in flags and it is they were celebrating Am Yisrael. It was so inspirational. I'm like taking videos because I said I have to send them home because people wouldn't believe that these people are celebrating when they had to leave their home. And here they are in a, in a hotel room with I don't know how many children and yet they're outside. Here's my teacher. And they're outside and uh, celebrating. So one, I want to get back to the inspirational thing. It was um, two days ago, my nephew uh, is in a Hummer unit and they were traveling from the north to the south um, and they had to fill up their Hummers. So they were going to come through Beit Shemesh, which is where our family lives. And we woke up at like six in the morning when shopping, we made them a humongous breakfast, like, like, like a buffet. And it was in a gas station on picnic tables. And um, I got a chance to get up and speak to them. Of course, I broke down crying. And they they had somebody talk to me. I have the video of it, Suri, you would love it. It's incredible how much he appreciates everyone in the world. And it's really very special. I have to send it to you. Um, and, and by the way, they also received a lot of donations of gear, goggles, and um, things that they strapped to their legs and just things that were donated and they were able to get them. And I watched them put it on. They used them right then and there. It was really amazing to see. So just seeing the brotherhood of those guys on their, um, you know, stopping off and being able to feed them and give them good food. There was also something that was really incredible. There was a mom that came with her little girl with a yellow bag from the gas station store. And she said that um, her daughter saw them because you can't miss four Hummers. Her daughter saw them and went into the store and wanted to buy them snacks. So she brought them this big bag of snacks and thanked them for everything they did. It was very, very beautiful to see. Gina, so, yes. You, you, uh, you recently retired from the New York City Department of Ed. What do you think about your um, colleagues now going on strike for a day in support of Hamas? It's very, very difficult to watch. Very, very difficult. To, I mean, um, when the whole George Floyd thing happens, they made us attend all of these um, equity and diversity trainings to make sure that we understood exactly what it was and how we need to think before we talk so that we consider the feelings of other people. And I mean, it was, it was intense. And there was so much of it. It was like, we couldn't bear it. And to see this, the complete opposite, there's no tolerance where we had to have all the tolerance. Um, it's just, there's no, there's no equity there at all. And it's very, very, very disappointing and upsetting after giving 33 years of my, my life and teaching kids to think critically and not just accept what they hear but ask questions and just, just give them the information you want them to believe. It's just, I can't believe these are educators. It's just, I can't wrap my head around it. It's, it's really so disappointing. And I hate to think that it might be even any colleagues that, I, that I've had, that I've worked with. And but this is, this, is, this is just, it was very hard for, um, Alana and I woke up this morning and um, we just were talking about how our emotions are very, very high and we're pumping and we're dancing and we're loving and we're like actors and, you know, and then there's, I just started crying at the dancing and I'm like, I, I don't know how to explain the feeling here. I don't know how to explain the feeling. It's, I don't think I can explain it to people to understand it in Israel. And it also brings me to what, where we went to today. Where we went to today was horrific. Um, we went to the funeral 
Which funeral of Rose Lubin? Rose, Lu yeah, Rose Lubin. And I've never been to Har Herzl. I've never been to a funeral, but we had to go. We were Americans here, Jews here. We just had to be there. And I never, I was saying to Alana, I cannot imagine how many people were there. And there was an email saying, you know, please come. The family is concerned that there won't be a lot of people. She's a lone soldier. That I, I, I don't, I can't put into words how many people converged mm -hmm. on to the into Har Herzl. You couldn't get near it. Um, and I even saw moms with little infants, and I was like, they're coming with their carriages, going up steps, going down steps. People were concerned about people staying hydrated. They came with tables and water bottles and started, and they're standing there while you're walking out, filling up your cups. I'm like, there's nothing, there's no one better than on this show. Like, it's incredible. How do you explain, so Dina? I want to end with this because I know you're in the middle of about to volunteer and, and, and finish your evening. I want to end with this. How do you explain with 1,400 people that died a month ago, and 240 hostages held by Hamas, and our troops on the front line. How do you explain the joy and the music and the singing that you're experiencing? That's a very, very, very good question. Um, I think that there that we are very resilient. And we always refer back to our values and our Muna, and we we hold them very close. That's how we. That's our roadmap, and um, we use that all the time with everything we do. Um, and I see that with every action here. Everything that people do, it's all about doing the right thing, and I think that they understand that in order for us to be resilient and be able to go on as. Am Yisrael, Klali. So we have to be resilient and we have to use the Torah to help guide us. We cannot understand Hashem's ways, but we cannot let that um, affect our Amuna. We have to build our Amuna and come together as a nation. And that's what everybody's doing here. And everybody wants everybody there to come here and to be part of, be part of this movement to heal and to grow and um it this is where it's going to happen and it's the most amazing feeling to be here there's no fear at all it's it's just beautiful i want to say one thing to your to the people who are watching um there when when i went to um uh, package boxes for the soldiers in gaza i went into this tremendous warehouse and there were so many duffels and so many boxes of all the things that have been collected in all the communities, and it's there, and they're using them. And it was while well, I was there, there were there was a car with with duffels right on top, you know, waiting to be unloaded, and there were empty duffels there that had nothing left in them anymore. So I just want everybody to know that you're you're so appreciated, and everything you're doing is making a difference, even from there. They're using what you're getting them. And they are they feel they feel the love. Dina, I want to thank you so much for speak taking the time to speak with me. I know that you and Alana are very, very busy. I hope to connect up with you again next week to hear about your inspiring work there. Thank you so much for representing Klal Yisrael here in New York and specifically the five towns so they know in Israel that we're thinking of them that we love them and thank you for representing them for us. I love you and um, keep up the good work. Um, our thoughts are with you and we appreciate your going there for us. Love you, Zuri. Thanks you for doing it. Have a good Shabbos. You too, Shabbat Shalom.